Why are you here? Why did you come here this evening? To look at you. <laughs> Thanks. Dean, I'm president of fellow Toastmasters and guests. Please understand me correctly. I love the fact that you are here tonight with us. But just yesterday, or just the other day, when I was looking through the website of Toastbusters, I found that only three people out of 23 members of Toastbusters were interested in public speaking. Sergei Kuzin is one of them. The other two are absent. And only one person, the president of Toastbusters, claimed that she was interested in foreign languages. The other 19 members had other interests. Interestingly enough, there was a one salient interest that stood out. What do you think it was? It was the second choice of the audience. <laughs> Somewhat surprisingly, at least for me, it was sports. Sports and physical activities, ranging from general interest in sports to some specific interests such as yoga and historical dancing. Since I told you that I like you as the audience, I decided to tell you about something you're interested in, about sports. And more specifically, I want to tell you about three physical activities. Jogging or running. Cycling. And swimming. Oh, I will tell you about something that they have in common and what each of them is specific, has specific characteristics. And what do you have? What do they have in common? They are, all of them are good for your brain, for your health, and for your looks. Just look at me. According to the article, cardiovascular fitness is linked to intelligence by Daniel Coles, who is PhD in applied economics. If you do one of these activities regularly, your, at the very least, your memory will improve and you will be better able to deal with stress. Some researches, other, some researches show that perhaps some general intelligence boost is also will be a result. Regarding your health, I found also an article, Physi Physical Activity for Health, on the Patient Co. UK web resource, which is supposed to be a reliable medical resource which is overlooked by a team of doctors. And according to them, one of the major health benefits that you can receive from doing one of those activities is regulating your pressure. If you have a high one, you will lower it. And if, you, if your pressure is normal, at the very least, you will prevent develop, development of high pressure, which in turn lower the chances of suffering a stroke or a heart attack, which is a nice thing to get rid of. And the third thing is looks is rather obvious. If you do them regularly, you don't become fat. But if you have to choose between them, what is better? What are they different? What are the differences between the thing, those activities? Running. Running is special in that it is so-called weight-bearing and pounding sport, pounding activity, meaning that you use your legs to carry your weight firstly and then when you run you 
you can say, you can imagine that you actually kick the earth every time you make a step. Interestingly enough, when I was starting my karate classes, the instructor told us when he was teaching us so-called front strike, and it looks something like that that you have to imagine that you step into the person and this way you will learn the technique rather fast interestingly enough since you strike the ground often while running it helps strengthen your bones and you lower according to the article running jogging by Richard Whale who's an exercise physiologist you strengthen your bones and thus in, the, in your old age you lower the probability that you will have fragile bones so called osteoporosis on the other hand since you do make your legs work your bones work according to actually this act of physical activity for health No, running, jogging, the same logic. If you jog more than 40 miles a week, and it's not very easy to do, it translates in something like 10 kilometers a day if you do it every day. If you jog more than 40 miles a week, you may suffer some leg injuries, and especially knee injuries. What is specific for cycling. What is cycling different? What is different between cycling and running? It is not a weight-bearing exercise, meaning that you don't make your legs work. Thus, you don't have thank you. You don't have such a probability according as high probability as in running of suffering your leg injuries. But there is one major risk and I won't even tell you anything but I will only tell you the title of the article describing the risk. And the title is Biking and Erectile Dysfunction A Real Risk According to the article, there is some risk if you spend a lot of time on a bicycle. And the third thing, swimming, is almost perfect. And that unlike in running and cycling you don't only develop your legs you, all, you develop all muscles of your body I know that Henry likes swimming for example Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and the only bad thing that I could think of while preparing for my project was firstly it's not as available as running when you just have to put on sneakers and go outside or even cycle and if you, like myself suffer from catching cold rather easily perhaps taking into account our weather you will catch cold more often if you visit swimming pools regularly <laughs> having told you about those three things of course I did all of them but I usually prefer to swim when it's warm enough and in the sea I have told you about the, those three physical exercises, physical activities, and hopefully when you think about what kind of physical exercise you should choose, it will some, somehow help you to answer the question, what is the best exercise for me?